There's been talk over uh, the years about the potential for spraying with drones and uh, joining us here on uh, Real Agriculture, we're at Manitoba Ag Days, we have Don Campbell of Roga Drone and Don, uh, to fly a drone commercially in Canada you need an SFOC, a, a flight operations certificate and you have been awarded the first SFOC for aerial application for, for spraying with a drone in Canada, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we started the process uh, it was time consuming because we were the first ones uh, applying for an application to Transport Canada to do aerial application. So we, uh, we found that a lot of the aviation regulations were written for manned aircraft. So we had some, some back and forth with Transport Canada to get approval for drones. Uh, quite a lengthy process, it took us about eight months to get through, but now that we've got that approval, we're hoping to make it easier for people in the future to be able to go through that process. So what were some of the, the key questions or, or issues that you had to sort through with, with Transport Canada? Well, we, we found dealing with Transport Canada probably two issues. Uh, number one is safety and number two is safety. So uh, uh, one of the things that applied to manned aircraft that uh, wasn't very practical on a drone is that they require a, a dump valve to jettison their load if they get into any kind of uh, issues where they have to drop the load. Um, because we're using such low payloads and flying three feet over the ground, that wasn't really uh, applicable to drones, so uh, we had some back and forth on that. Okay, and you don't have a, obviously don't have a, a human in the plane that needs to take priority over the, the load? No, that's that's probably one advantage. If you, if you do have an issue where you go down, you don't have a, a pilot issue getting injured or worse. So where do you see potential for, for spraying with drones in Canada? Where do you see the, the first adoption or, or, uh, or application for it? Well, uh, we started out uh, working with uh, Matt Johnson from M3 Aerial doing NDVI mapping. We thought maybe we would get uh, some area problem areas that we would maybe go in and spot spray on fields. When I, I researched uh, several different companies over the last couple of years, and when we hooked up with Cray Technologies out of the crane, uh, we found that their sole focus was on crop spraying. So they have some patented technologies that they can use uh, for ultra low volume, and we feel we can get into some bigger, bigger areas other than just spot spraying with that. So what sort of payload and, and capacity do you have with this this Cray? UAV? It's a 15 kg or 15 liter payload, which is not a lot, but because we're using ultra low volume. Uh, they have some technologies that uh, do away with some of the spray drift issues and evaporation issues that we use with ultra low volume. They have, uh, we're flying close to the ground, uh, we've got a lot of downwash off the eight props that they use for lift. They have a patented a rotary atomizer that's similar to manned aircraft that they can use on drones, just a smaller scale. And one of the biggest things they're doing is working with uh, electrostatic nozzles, similar to what you would see in uh, paint booths for cars where the paint is attracted to the metal. They were working with a fellow out of California that's patented a two-phase electrostatic system with light charges that is driving, also helping to drive that pesticide into the crop canopy and, and hopefully alleviate drift. Okay. So do you see potential for, for broad acre application with this or to start more with the spot spring and, and smaller geography sort of? Yeah, when we started out we were looking probably at uh, mosquito spraying because we feel it has a very good application in the insecticide. Uh, when we get into herbicides we have the drift issue, fungicides, uh, one of the questions that always comes up is water volume, they always want higher water volumes for fungicide treatments. Uh, we're doing some work with uh, PAMI. We have an application in with them this summer to do some fungicide applications side by side and uh, I'll see how we do with that. Maybe I should point out that uh, because we're ultra low volume, we're off label uh, with our water volume. So it's going to take uh, some testing. We're working with uh, a couple of different chemical companies. Uh, an aircraft company that's going to do some strip drift testing for us. So we we feel that this year is going to be a lot of education and uh, demos to get the product out there and see how we do. Okay. So where does this uh, where does this go from here? We can watch uh, 
sci-fi kind of theme movie with swarms of, of flying machines, does uh, this end up going in that direction, or what's your, your I think, well, swarm technology is here now. Um, Transport Canada regulations require you to have a drone for each pilot that you're flying at the time being. Even though the technology is here, I think it may be a little bit of time before we get into uh, the swarm technology where you might be flying four or five at once, uh, just to get the approval. The technology is here already. Okay. And docking, I guess that could be automated down the road too? Yeah, the, these fly fully autonomous. You just uh, plan your uh, flight mission. You press a button, it goes out. Uh, when it's done, its payload or battery life gets low, it returns uh, to the base and you refill. Because we're flying at speeds of uh, up to 70 miles an hour at three feet, uh, we couldn't control that manually, so they've they're run they're set to run fully autonomously. With it, they have a terrain follow capability as well to follow the ground. Finally, then, Don, in terms of uh, the cost, can you put this into the con into a context of what farmers currently invest in in spraying technology and high clearance sprayers and aerial hiring aerial applicators and that sort of thing? Where where do you see drone spraying fitting in in the cost spectrum? Well, I guess it would, uh, in that case, it's going to uh, depend a little bit on your application rates. Uh, these retail for $50,000 US. Uh, if you compare that to a high clearance spear or an ag plane, it's a considerable savings. You'd, you'd probably have to do the math to see the area coverage, like planes and high clearance rigs have their place. I don't think this will be a, a replacement, probably an add on tool that you can use. Okay, cool. Very interesting, thanks for your time, Don. Okay, thank you very much.